Hello everybody, my name is Robert Kellens. I'm going to walk you through a net present value calculation using the BA2 Plus calculator. So whether you're studying in college, university, in a finance or accounting degree, or taking a designation, whether that be the CFA, CPA, CFP, or any other of the uh, financial or accounting designations, at some point in time, more than likely, you're going to have to calculate NPV, and more than likely, probably with the BA2 Plus. So I'm going to walk you through how we can uh, calculate NPV using the BA2 plus. So let's get jump right into our example. Here's our example uh, that we're going to use uh, today. So we have uh, a capital outflow or a project that's going to cost us about $20 million uh, to get started in year number uh, zero. Okay, followed by five positive cash inflows. And you can see those cash inflows of $6 million, $13 million, $7 million, and $4 million in year number four and five respectively. Uh, we're going to use a cost of capital or a discount rate of 8% to discount all these cash flows going back uh, to the present value. And then as the NPV does, we sum up all those present values. Uh, once we get those to uh, cash flow times zero, we sum those up and NPV is either going to come up positive or negative. We accept or reject the project. So let's look at... Um, the calculator and see how we can input some of these numbers for NPV. So here's your BA2 plus calculator. Uh, we turn the BA2 plus calculator on. We're going to use these two functions mainly here when we do our calculations for our cash flow and our NPV. So if you press on the cash flow, uh, you're going to see CF0. If you don't see CF0, that means that you have some cash flows uh, that are potentially stored in your cash flow function at this point in time. So it's always best practice to clear out any cash flows that you may have stored within there. All you have to do is press second uh, and clear work. That's going to clear everything. And once you do that, your cash flow should say CF0 equals zero. So let's enter our cash flows now. So your first cash flow is going to be $20 million. This is a negative amount. We hit enter, stored in as cash flow number zero, negative $20 million. Hit the down arrow. This is going to come to cash flow at year number one. This is $6 million in our example. We hit enter. We hit the down arrow. This is going to come to say F01. F01 represents the frequency this happens. This only happens once. This $6 million only happens once in a row. There's not a second $6 million. So this is going to be six. We leave this as one. We hit enter. Okay, cash flow number two is going to be $13 million in our example. We hit $13 million, enter. Again, this is going to happen once we leave F02 as one. Cash flow number three is going to be $7 million. Okay, we hit 7 million, enter. Again, frequency F03 is going to be 1. Cash flow in year number 4 is going to be $4 million. Okay, so we put $4 million, enter. Now, once we get the, the frequency of, of the fourth cash flow, we can either leave this as one, or in our case, since we have $4 million that happens twice in a row here, we could actually change the frequency to two if we wanted to here. In the first walkthrough that I do with you guys here, I'm going to leave this as one. Okay, so we leave this as one, which means that in cash flow number five, we again have to enter $4 million in, in year number five, and this frequency again is going to be one. Okay, so we have all of our cash flows entered within there. Once you have all those cash flows entered and the frequency stored, you can just clear that. Your next step is going to be NPV. Okay, so you come to NPV, this is going to say I equals, this is going to ask you what your cost of capital or your discount rate is going to be. Our discount rate is going to be 8 in our example. We hit 8, enter. Okay, we hit the down arrow. This is going to now say NPV equals 0. Well, our NPV... Uh, doesn't equal zero. I've done this calculation before. What you have to do here is once you get the NPV, you press compute. So we press compute on NPV. This is going to show us our NPV in this case is 7.92. So positive 7.92. This project is going to add approximately $7.92 million to the value of our firm. We should accept this project. Okay, and so if we go back and we uh, redouble up on the cash flow function that I showed you guys earlier, I'm going to show you an alternative way in which you can enter these cash flows year number four and five here, and this is going to have to do with the frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear out everything and walk through the process again real quickly with you guys to just show how you can enter those uh, cash flow year four and five uh, just a little differently. Okay, so again, cash flow in year number one, uh, this is going to be $20 million negative. Enter, down arrow, cash flow number uh, in year number one, six million dollars. Enter, okay, frequency once, cash flow two is going to be 13. Okay, enter, this is going to happen once, we're good there. Cash flow number three, seven million. Uh, enter, 
frequency happens once. Here's where we're going to make a little bit of a change, right? So cash flow number four, this is going to be four million as we entered before, but the frequency here, instead of having one, we're actually going to put two here, okay? And this is an account for both of these cash flows that happen in year four and five. This four million dollars happens twice in a row. So here, the frequency, instead of putting one there, we put two, okay? Once we have all those guys stored, we don't have to worry about putting the fifth cash flow in there because cash for that frequency now equals two accounts for that fifth year cash flow. So we come out of there, we go back to NPV, our discount rate, our cost of capital is going to be 8 again, we hit the down arrow, we get the NPV, we compute, there's the same example that we got, or same answer that we got before, 7.92. So that's how you calculate NPV uh, with the BA2+. plus. Since we're here calculating NPV, most people... We'll also calculate IRR corresponding to NPV. And since we have all these cash flows already stored within there, let's see what the IRR would be uh, with this example with all these cash flows within here. So we've already entered these cash flows within there. We want to get the IRR. We want to compute what IRR is going to be. All we have to do is press IRR. And we can press Compute. In our example here, our, our, our IRR is 24.06. So if you guys remember, IRR, what does that actually mean? This is the discount rate that would make NPV equal to zero. Okay, and so we can confirm that since we uh, have the ability to calculate what NPV is now. So if we have 24.06 in our head, if we go back to NPV, instead of using this cost of capital of eight, if we put 24.06 in our calculator, enter and we hit the down arrow to get the NPV, and we come over here and compute NPV with using that 24.06. If we compute that now, voila, there's NPV equal to zero. Okay, so this confirms IRR is the discount rate that will make NPV equal to zero. So I hope the, uh, the tutorial helped you here a little bit uh, in using the BA2 plus calculator, at least in inputting some cash flows, and calculate NPV and IRR. Follow up with several more videos uh, with the BA2 plus. Please feel free to leave comments or questions below. And thank you for watching.